Uh, I'll go ahead and get started. We want to talk today about how um, the TIM tools, this is kind of an informal discussion about how the TIM tools can be used by education service organizations. Uh, a, a lot of times the, the TIM tools, sorry, let me start by saying the technology integration matrix evaluation tools, uh, or uh, uh, more briefly, the TIM tools, are used by schools and districts and ministries of education all over the world to evaluate technology integration, plan professional development, allocate resources. Um, one of the things that we thought would be interesting as a discussion, it's something that has, um, that, that um, frequently comes up where um, a, a consultancy or in particular an education service center or a regional service center that supports other um, uh, uh, school districts um, will inquire about licensing the TIM tools. And we have uh, several education service organizations that do license the TIM tools and use them for their members. And so we thought that it might be interesting to just sort of talk through what we see as some of the, the features of the TIM tools um, that might be of particular interest to other education service centers and similar uh, institutions. Um, my name is uh, James Welsh. Uh, I'm the director of the Florida Center for Instructional Technology. And um, uh, I work quite a bit on the, the Tim Tools uh, project. And we have uh, others uh, uh, with us on this call who are also intimately familiar with all things Tim and all things Tim Tools, uh, including Roy Winkleman and Christine Harms. Um, and so um, just to kind of start us off, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about some of the tools that are offered within this software suite. This is a, um, a, a suite of online data collection tools um, that we uh, developed here at the University of South Florida. Um, it's based on research that we've done um, with, in partnership with uh, the Department of Education and with um, school districts uh, uh, all over all over the state, but then we've also done research outside of the state at this point and, uh, and in other countries um, around uh, professional development and technology integration. So um, it it arises out of that work. We we license it here from the university through our our technology transfer office, um, and um, the software itself includes. Um, uh, an observation tool, a sort of a classroom walkthrough to, tool to examine uh, technology integration in classrooms. It also includes a, uh, a technology survey, um, the technology uses and perception survey, which is sort of a broad survey instrument uh, that's used to gather data about um, how, how well prepared and supported teachers are to integrate technology. Um, it includes other tools, uh, a, a technology coaching tool, uh, a survey tool so that you can create custom surveys, um, uh, other, uh, other tools that, that um, uh, complement um, technology integration and, and professional development. Uh, but the main focus, uh, the main thing I thought might be interesting to focus on here um, is uh, why that makes sense as something that an education service center might approach. Um, this is a, um, a, a service that a lot of times this is a, an area of management within a school district um, that falls through the cracks, technology integration in particular. Like you might have an instructional technology department that's focused on um, uh, boxes and wires and making sure that the, the, um, the, the hardware and software that is required is, is there uh, up and running available for users. Um, but instructional technology um, in a lot of cases is something that gets um, either overlooked or uh, it's the first thing on the chopping block in a budget cut. Um, so um, a lot of times in, instructional technology directors are um, uh, have have um, sort of split responsibility for other areas that are not instructional technology, um, and in many cases they just don't have instructional technology directors. So, it, and yet it's something that affects every student uh, in a district and every teacher in a district. And 
it, it's, it's it's perhaps somewhat easier to make that case now than it was um, a year ago um, that instructional technology and a good IT, um, not just IT, but a good instructional approach to technology integration is vital um, to school districts. Um, and yet, you know, often overlooked. So um, it's something that I think makes sense and a lot of education service agencies um, uh, do have instructional technology and professional development as an area that they supply um, to, their, to their constituent uh, school districts. Um, the, the tools that we offer have a variety of different reporting features and administrative features that work um, that uh, work at a district level. So for instance, you as an education service organization um, might uh, conduct observations uh, as a service out in districts and then provide those reports to districts. Um, through the website, you can create, through our web-based software, you can create a report on observations, for instance, that is um, that customizes the results for each um, district supervisor or each um, uh, school leader. Um, so the way the software works, and actually, I'm just click over into the software here. And while I'm clicking over into the software, I've been talking quite a bit. If anybody has any questions, I'd love to hear from you. Anybody from an education service center who has a um, has a thought, or um, uh, if you currently use uh, the Tim tools in that setting. Um, that you want to contribute or Christine or Roy or anybody else uh, in the room really if you have a question or a comment um, I'd love to hear it. Uh, James there is a question in the chat that I'll uh, read aloud for you. Um, what sort of cost savings can districts expect if we purchase a license for all our districts? Oh uh, that's a good question so that's that's I think another area uh, that's that that shows the benefit really. Um, if you, for, it, it's much more cost effective, like the, the software is priced by volume of teachers um, and it's less expensive the more teachers you have. So if you have a number of small districts that are licensing it, um, they'll be paying more than if the service center licenses it and then uh, um, partitions the, the software out for the the districts to use. And it's really easy to manage that. Like basically here, I'm, I believe I'm sharing my screen. Can you see my screen okay? Should be looking at the... Yep, yep. Great. Um, so uh, this is the, the main menu. These are the tools that are uh, available here on the left. Um, the technology uses and perception survey, the observation tool, the coaching tool, uh, the other tools. Um, if we go into the admin center, um, you'll see that there's a section called zones. Um, this version of the software thought is that you are a school district, so we call it the school, the district, uh, a, a district version of the Tim Tools, but um, you might divide your district into zones, um, maybe by geography or maybe by grade level. Um, so the zone feature um, can be used, um, basically in this setting you would um, create a, a, for an education service organization, you would create a zone for each school district that you serve. Um, and then each zone can have as many schools as, uh, as are, are needed. Um, so you would set up a zone for each uh, district that you serve and then add the schools into those zones. And then you could set up uh, zone administrators. So you might have somebody within a district um, that's your main point of contact, your main technology, uh, instructional technology coordinator, that person can administer their zone without having access to the other zones. Um, you have, um, uh, we also have a role that's for a uh, school leader. So district leader, zone leader, school leader. In this case, the district would be the education service center. Um, the zone would be the school districts that you work with. The schools would be, um, of course, the, the component schools. So you could have, um, let's say for instance a report that's written for principals um, and every principal within any of the uh, uh, districts would be able to access that report and that principal would see survey results or observation data or coaching data for only their school um, regardless of zone um, or they could see 
let's say that you set up a, um, a zone level report, um, district leaders could go view that zone level report and they would only see their own uh, data. Um, so just, you know, that's just briefly the idea that within the reporting that's available, let's see, um, here's survey data reported out from our technology uh, survey, that, that this survey data um, you can distribute out as a service to your uh, component uh, organizations. You can do it all through the software. Everything's set up to do it through the software. Are there uh, other there's a couple other questions in the chat, if, if that's all right. Um, Please. Uh, Thank you, Nate. You're very welcome. Uh, is this something we could use to collect data for our component schools and, and guide professional development planning? Um, and then kind of a piggyback that goes along with that question um, is, what kind of data can they get out of the tools to inform um, writing or helping write tech tech plans for, for districts? Yes, is the answer to those things. Um, yes, uh, data can be used from the tools. It's not can be used, is used. There are uh, schools, districts, uh, other organizations that use data from the TIM tools to guide their professional development. That's really the power of of, of this, the data that you get is that it's usable, actionable, real data that, that you can apply. Um, so yes, you can use it to target your professional development specifically to what teachers need um, in their technology integration. Um, you can use it to create customized technology integration professional development plans for your teachers. Um, and Sorry, Nate, what was that second question? Um, the second question was in regards to um, informing uh, tech plans. So they said that they help districts with their required tech plans um, and, and sometimes actually write them for them. Um, yeah. So what, what kind of data, what, what actual kind of data can you get from the tools that can help inform those plans? Yeah, well, I mean, I think the technology uses and perceptions data um, can be uh, really useful with, with regard to that. So let's say for instance, um, one section of the survey is about comfort and confidence using technology. Um, so um, providing a report that shows, um, let's say beginning of year to end of year, um, how your professional development efforts have affected the attitudes of teachers, um, the, the, the comfort and confidence of teachers um, with regard to technology integration. That's one way of demonstrating your value as a professional development provider um, is to, uh, to, to show that, that kind of thing through the reporting. Does that get at it? Or was there, is there something else that would be particularly helpful to highlight here? Uh, Roy, Christine, uh, do either of you have anything to add with that? Um, if not, I think that that was, yeah, Christine, yeah, thank you. Here's some observations. Yeah, I was going to add, James, um, that one thing that might be helpful when people are thinking about creating technology plans is the different types of data that can be obtained from the different tools. So you had, you had highlighted the tops in terms of survey data, and there's also a, re, you know, a reflection tool where teachers can do reflections on where they are in terms of their right. technology integration. And those pieces of data can be brought in to give that perspective. And then sort of almost a you know, triangulation then in the observation tool. So, you know, someone who, you know, whether it's a, a peer observation or, you know, a group leader of some sort can go and um, do an observation in that particular teacher's classroom of a particular lesson and then describe that lesson in terms of the technology integration matrix so that you can have three very different um, perspectives on what's going on in that classroom, all within the same framework of, of the TIM as a context for understanding. Um, so I think that makes it really powerful and helpful to the teacher, to the school, to the district, to the you know, larger um, setting as well. Great, thank you. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a great point. Um, there, there's a couple other questions, James, that, I, that I've kind of skipped over. I appreciate all the questions that we're getting here. Um, uh, you may have kind of already touched 
on this, um, but what we do most of the PD in our region, that's our main service. How, how does this relate to our programs? And, well, mm -hmm. no, sorry, go ahead. We offer online professional development on the use of the tools in at a variety of different levels. So like there are, there's professional development that we offer that's specifically aimed at um, district leadership in planning out their implementation of the 10 tools. We also offer training for uh, observation. Uh, so getting the, your observers trained ready to, uh, uh, ready to, to go into classrooms. Um, we also offer training on, uh, for teachers on understanding the TIM as a model and uh, figuring out how to apply the TIM to their, um, to their instructional planning. Um, that all of that training uh, is uh, delivered online. So it, we could do a train the trainer model where you have your uh, uh, educational service agency uh, trainers attend our training and then uh, deliver uh, training to the, the districts um, or the districts could uh, get access to that training directly through you as the education service provider. Um, so, so we could we could build in a solution that bundles access to the online professional development with your um, with your Tim Tools purchase, um, so that those things are sort of integrated and seamless for you. Beautiful, thank you. Um, I have I think one more here. Then, if I've missed anything, please just copy and paste it, and I'll I'll see it at the top. Um, this one is, uh, we supply all the tech integrators, uh, all the tech integrators to our districts. How would our tech coaches directly use these tools? What can they get out of it? Well, and so, I mean, it depends on what your tech coaches are doing, assuming from the title that they're, that they are coaching. Um, so it, it makes sense. I mean, the coaching tool makes sense. We have a, a tech, a technology coaching tool. And actually it's kind of a, uh, a coaching tool. Oh, let me show you. Um, it's a coaching tool that could be used for lots of things other than technology coaching as well. But of course, technology coaching is what we're mainly talking about here. James, while you're accessing that, I can just yeah, please. and um, speak to the fact that within this coaching tool that James is going to show you here in a second. Um, all of the other Tim tool, not all, but most of the other Tim tools currently can, the results can be pulled in and used as uh, data to inform goals and outcomes within the coaching tool. So it's nicely integrated in that perspective. So the tech coaches have access to um, a top survey that the teacher may have completed or Tim observations or previous coaching cycles that the teacher may have already implemented. So this serves as both a framework for organizing. We're using the term we use as a coaching cycle. Um, so the tech coaches can see all the different teachers who are coaching in a particular time frame and, you know, have everything organized in one place. And that's a, what we're hearing is a really, uh, people are appreciating that benefit. Um, and sure. has got it right here. Yeah, and this is the, um, I'm, I'm in a coaching cycle in the Tim C. Um, so it's moving through these five phases, setting goals uh, for the coaching cycle, planning activities to support those goals, monitoring progress on those activities, recording the outcomes uh, of the goals that you set, and then reflecting on the coaching cycle. One of the most important aspects, figuring out what in that coaching cycle worked well for you, um, what you want to change for next time, um, kind of closing off that cycle and then starting into a new cycle. And, you know, as Christine said, you can select supporting data from within the TIM tools uh, to support the goals that you're setting um, and also select supporting data um, on, when you're recording your outcomes uh, to, to, um, to show the ways in which you have, your practice has changed based on the, the coaching cycle. Um, you know, and so it's, it's really meant to support um, a really great conversations between coaches and clients. Um, and so that, that would be a primary way, I think, that uh, tech coaches at a district, at a ESC level, uh, could work with, um, with folks out in the district. James, can I just jump in here real quick? I see a, another question in the chat that's come in. 
um, ask about what coaching models is based on. And I, I feel, forgot to mention that, that we specifically designed it to work with really almost any coaching model, any mentoring model as well. We've just set it up in a, um, a five phase process, but if you're using a particular approach, a particular model, it should easily um, work within the Tim C framework. And um, it's also very flexible in that you can choose to, you know, depending on the pro how you have your um, program designed, you can modify different components of the Tim C to make it work specifically with your coaching program. Yeah, yeah, great point. It's 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 agnostic of the system that you're using. All right. Well, thank you so much for uh, joining us today. Thank you for your questions and comments. Um, we're gonna hang out here in the room. So if anybody has anything specific they want to talk about uh, after, we'd love to talk to you further. And um, always feel free to reach out to us via email if you'd like to. Uh, to set up a, a meeting or you have any other questions that we can answer. Um, I, I would like to say, James, as well, that there, this session will be, uh, this was recorded, so it's going to go up on our site. And uh, Roy, if you wouldn't mind putting uh, that link in the chat for anyone, uh, that it'll be up n next week at some time after the conference, so you can uh, uh, view it that way as well. And, and there's a question about having access to a trial version. Yes, that's possible. Yeah, we can do a, a walkthrough for you specifically and give you access to evaluate the software um, before you set up an account.